Okay, part six of my uh, attack wood gasification boiler install with 1,000 gallons thermal storage. Today I'd like to talk about some add-ons and refinements to the system. Uh, We're in the attached garage of the house where the lines from the boiler shed are coming in through the sidewall. And I've added some temperature monitoring. So we're monitoring uh, supply and return temps, basically right here. Uh, basically I have a temperature probe zip tied underneath this little blob of spray foam. I need to get some more pipe insulation on here on this one yet. And we have some, uh, this little digital panel meter is reading out in degrees Fahrenheit. These are off eBay. They're literally between four and eight dollars a piece depending if you want to get them direct from China or uh, buy from one of the sellers that stocks them in the U.S. And so we have supply and return and uh, I have a, a almost identical setup over in the boiler shed uh, checking the lines uh, right before they exit uh, the shed and go into the underground lines. So one of, the, one of the bits of information we can get, we can compare this, for instance, the supply temperature here versus what we're reading over in the boiler shed, and hopefully it's gonna be the same. Um, if there's a difference there, and you're gonna see a degree or two difference just because of the tolerance on these little panel meters. Um, but uh, the important part is, you, if you know what it is when the system is new and everything's insulated well, and then over time you can monitor uh, if there's a loss in temperature uh, after the, the water, heated water flows through the underground lines uh, and that will give you a clue that you're, there's something wrong going wrong with your underground lines. Um, so mine actually read the same so that's good. And the other piece of information you can get from this is we can look at the difference here between supply and return. And we can calculate how many BTUs we're delivering to the house at any given time. And to do that, we just come over here. I got a little cut sheet here. So we want to we know the difference in degrees between supply and return. And uh, three or four degrees. I had four degrees when I wrote this down. And we also need to know the how many what the flow is of water. And I have four gallons per minute, and I've taken that right off the uh, the uh, Alpha circulator. It has a digital readout that gives you a rough estimate of how much water is flowing. I don't, I don't know how accurate that is, but for our purposes, we'll go with the four gallons per minute. And we, for our calculation, we need to know gallons per hour because we're inter interested in BTUs per hour delivered. So we just multiply that by 60, and then we know our magic... 8.33, uh, it takes 8.33 BTUs to raise one gallon of water, one degree Fahrenheit, and that works in reverse as well when you're removing that uh, energy from the water. So the simple calculation is four degrees change times 240 gallons per minute times 8.33 BTUs. And right now, whatever emitter is running in the house is uh, delivering 8,000 BTU per hour. So let's, one of the things I've changed is one of the emitters in the house. And so let's go take a look at that. Uh, it's my piping running against the back side of the garage wall. That's where it heads into the basement. Let's get over to the fan coil. And I uh, want to excuse my messy basement office here. Um, so we'll get to the utility room. And you'll see the now decommissioned wood furnace, and right next to it we have a heat pump water heater. And uh, I'm a believer in these water heaters, they're great. Uh, they really don't use much power if you use them in heat pump mode. And they, in, in the summer they're great because they dehumidify and cool off the basement a little bit. Now in the winter, that cooling effect is not as welcome. And uh, as a result, this level, now that I'm not running the wood furnace, has ended up being a little bit on the cool side. Um, I don't have a lot from the propane furnace, even though I've got the hot water coil up here to deliver my heat from the wood boiler. That's a 24 by 24. 
Well, I don't have a lot of supply registers in the basement. And so I opted to add another heat emitter. And that's come <clears throat> pipings down here. Um, you'll probably notice in one of my other videos I had a second fan coil installed in that filter box. And that's kind of why that's why the piping goes right down there. I removed that. I discovered that one 24 by 24 fan coil is more than enough for this furnace. The second one wasn't really gaining me anything. So I removed that and ran some more three, some three quarter inch piping to a this is a wall mounted, call it a thin water fan coil. It's uh, actually purchased through Menards. It uh, is a Whirlpool brand, but it's actually, man it's just branded Whirlpool. It's actually manufactured by an outfit called HTP, which is a, a manufacturer of gas and probably electric boilers um, or hydronic heaters. And they have some heat emitters, and this is uh, one of the heat emitters they have. And it's a nice little unit. It's about 52 inches wide. It has a it's rated output of uh, 24,000 BTU at, with a water temperature at 158 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, it'll work. It's also rated at a lower temperature of 122 degrees. 122 degrees Fahrenheit where it'll still put out about 11 or 12,000 BTU and for us wood boiler guys with that have storage um, that don't want to keep their wood boiler boiler fired up all the time you want to run off storage for many hours uh, you need emitters that will work um, at lower temperatures and 122 two degrees is a lower temperature and allows you to use those BTUs and thermal storage more effectively. And I've also installed this in kind of a central hallway in the lowest level, the basement level, and so I can get some convection up through all the other levels in the house. So on a warmer day outside, this is really all that's needed. Um, and the, uh, the main propane furnace with the fan coil doesn't kick in a whole lot which is good because that fan is kind of a power hog in that furnace. That's about a 200 watt fan. That fan in that uh, Whirlpool unit is a little brushless DC motor fan, only draws 24 watts, so very energy, energy efficient.